Did you ever say to Henry, did you do this? No, not, no. Not you never like said that. to him, tell me, look me in the eye, that you didn't do this, you didn't murder your family? I did not do that to him, no. The one person who refuses to believe Henry Van Breda could murder his own family is his girlfriend, 23-year-old Daniela Yonse Van Rensburg. She is now his biggest defender. You have never feared Henry? No. You've never felt privately, mm, No. He might have done this. No, I felt very safe around him. Not long after the murders, Daniela met Henry at a cooking school where they were both enrolled. Do you remember the first time you met Henry? Yes, I was in an elevator at chef school. Um, I think I asked him about Australia because he had an accent and he was always just talking about Australia. And he just told me a little bit about Australia and he was quite shy. You had no idea who Henry was? No, not at that stage, no. And how did you find out? I found out through um, the internet. I saw, I saw an article and then I saw him and then I was like, oh, that, that really does make sense because he does not talk a lot about his family. Your first reaction was, oh? <laughs> it was, um, I was not, very oh hurt. God. No, I was, I was actually not hurt, but um, I felt really heartbroken for him. I think this was the first night he told me he loved me though. But yeah, that's why I chose this photo. <laughs> Within months of Daniela falling for Henry, he was officially charged with murdering his mother, his father and brother, and the attempted murder of his sister. Daniela was unfazed, unable to reconcile the man she knows with the man Henry was alleged to be. What makes you so convinced? Just knowing him, knowing how unable he is to hurt anything. He doesn't like seeing anybody or anything in pain. He honestly, he, he, he will rather be in pain just to help someone else out. He is very selfless. Nothing made me think that it doesn't add up. His story still always made sense to me with the lack of evidence. Detective Sergeant Marlon Apollos and his team always felt Henry's story just didn't stack up. Right from the moment he claimed an intruder broke into the family home. There's no breach of security, the house has not been clearly broken into, and nothing's been taken. Mm. And all the valuables are on the bottom floor. Yeah, most of the valuables were down on the bottom floor. There was watches lying around, there was... Teresa's handbag was downstairs on the table. Nothing was taken. Did it occur to you, though, that it, it seemed an incredibly brutal thing to do? A family's sleeping, the valuables are, are downstairs. Yeah. Um, what, what would be the purpose of...? I don't know. I really don't know. In your own mind, have you, have you thought through these yes. things? Yes, because I don't... An intruder comes into the house, yes. but doesn't take anything. But he can't probably take something... He probably thought that he had to get rid of the people stopping him from taking something. But before. they're asleep upstairs. They're in their beds. Have you not thought through why would an intruder do that? I have, but I can't answer it because, I mean, all situations are just different. You can't, you can't just assume either. Unlawfully and intentionally count one. When Henry faced court in March last year, he was pitted against no-nonsense prosecutor Susan Galloway. It's in an extraordinary courtroom moment, she insisted Henry reenact his version of the crime. That is opening up there. Most people, if you're in that kind of an altercation, will tell you, listen, I don't know what blow followed what blow. I just knew he was coming at me with an, an axe, which I managed to take from him. He was able to give almost a choreographed version of the arms and the hands and the weapons. How did Henry feel about doing that? Very bad. He hated the fact that he would have had to. He didn't want to come close to the weapons. But perhaps the most damning evidence was that the knife wounds Henry suffered were, in fact, self-inflicted. What was it about those wounds that ultimately said to you, yes, 
Henry van Breda has done this to himself? They were all very superficial. They barely bro broke the skin. They were uniform, so they were similar in nature. They had a similar appearance. It looked as if it could have been inflicted with the same weapon. So you can see the bandage, there's no, it's not blood so. Henry's injuries were analysed by forensic pathologist, Dr Marianne Temensma. You know, if you think you were just involved in an altercation, a physical fight, a struggle for life and death, you know, people holding on to each other, you would maybe expect to see bruises around the forearms, around the upper arm, as you're pulling and pushing, um, but nothing. So yes. for, for Henry to get away with this, no, I, as you say, he must be the luckiest man alive. You didn't find it odd that no. Henry uh, suffered very little by comparison to the rest of his family? No, I didn't. I didn't, because I wasn't there. I don't know really what happened. I mean, anything can happen in a circumstance like that. So you can't really judge a picture just by looking at that. Indeed, much of what doesn't make sense Daniela puts down to Henry's recent diagnosis of epilepsy. She believes Henry's claim that he'd passed out that night for nearly three hours because he'd suffered a seizure, which she says impaired his memory and explains the many inconsistencies in his story. So everything you see through that prism now, that you feel that that's what dictated the evening, Mm. and Henry's explanations for mm. his actions and his inactions. Yes. The seizure, in your opinion, is the reason. It's not necessarily the reason. It just does put a lot of things together. Maybe things that I was previously a bit confused about absolutely Ooh. made sense, yeah. yeah. To have passed out for nearly three hours, was that considered possible? If one thinks about the rivulets of blood that dried on, on, on Henry's chest, those droplets didn't deviate. So if he had passed out, one would have expected the path of the blood rivulets to change, and that didn't. So he passed out sitting up? Sitting upright, yes. just scared. I couldn't, um, I didn't know what to do. For the prosecution, the pieces of circumstantial evidence were beginning to paint a damning picture. Forensic analysis of blood spatter at the crime scene and on Henry's shorts and socks further exposed his story as a lie. For me, that was the cherry on the, on the cake. His version of having stood inside the bathroom behind that door could not have possibly been because there was no blood spatter around that door, on the door itself, but there were blood spatter on his clothes. Socks, boxer shorts, it doesn't matter. You can't have the one and not the other. What do you think happened that night? I think there was an argument um, during the evening it was probably about something that's a long-standing issue in the family. And I think in his mind, it built up to something more than it really was. It, it seemed to him the right decision to make and to, to take out his anger on his brother. And, and once, you, once he started on that road, especially once the father found out what was going on, there was no way to stop, it, unless he was willing to admit that I had just killed my brother. So that's why the rest of the family had to die too. I think so. Coming up... It's just plain criminality. Is he cowardly? No, I think he's actually arrogant. The judge decides... It was a cold-blooded murder. But still more support for the killer. There is no motive. But I love you so, so much. And Van Breda's letters from jail. They are amazing to me. That's next on 60 Minutes.